I know what this is. I've been doing this a long time. I know everything. I was sitting in the car, thinking about what everything. I know everything about everything. You don't know that. And then people come tell me at the last minute, what's happening? I said, ah, you, tell me, you should tell me quicker. All right, lift your hands. Happy Father's Day. Thank you very much, I, I receive. Happy Father's Day. All right. Let's pray. Can we pray? Thank you, Lord Jesus. Just pray in the spirit one minute. Lift your hands up to the Lord. The Bible says in... Uh, um, I was looking for this. Okay. The Bible says in the book of Thessalonians 5.18, I believe, first or second, I don't remember, but it says, in everything... Give thanks. Let's thank God right now. Lift your hands. Not for everything, but in everything. Because this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning us. Now, what I see in that, what I see in that, all right, you photographers, you're very nervous. Just hide somewhere, take your pictures. But maybe, brother, go back a little bit. All right, I want to see the angels here. All right, all right. Lift your hands up. The Lord is amazing to give us the victory. He, it's not a sad story. When Paul said, in everything, give thanks, really what it means is prophetic, because there's something coming. For this is the will of God by Christ Jesus concerning us, in Christ Jesus concerning us, meaning he's taking us somewhere. Amen. He's not, you know, thinking that we have a sad story and he's going to leave us somewhere. God is never our problem. Amen. The problem is always our environment, the devil, and his ugly friends, etc. Et yeah. But Jesus is never the problem. Amen. Amazing to me, at, at how hard some things can be, that he said, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Sometimes I say, really? Mm. Are you sure? <laughs> your yoke is easy and your burden is light. Uh-huh. That's like a prophetic word, yes? yes? But that's what he said. Why? Because when you're in him, things move right. They move correctly. They happen correctly. Lift your hands up. Hi, hi, hi. Come on. Work the shoulders, man. I don't know where you slept last night. <laughs> or what kind of hard bed. Lift them up. They work. Mine is king size with all kinds of pillows. The top mattress put together, the most expensive mattress. That's how I sleep. I'm sorry. So I'm okay. My shoulders are good. I don't know if anybody slept on a hard place. I want to pray you get healed right now. And let God upgrade your life to something better. Amen. Let's use what we have and lift our hands way up high. Psalm 121 says, lift up your eyes unto the hills, to the high place from whence cometh your help. Your help comes from the Lord. Yeah, and Isaiah 2 said, look up to the mountain. That's Zion is supposed to be climbing all the time. Now, at least this church has a high ceiling. I like that. I'm not like going like this and I'm touching something. I would have to stretch very far to go up. So we have room. Pray in the Holy Ghost one second. And say, Lord. Lord. Pray in the Spirit. You got, if you don't speak in tongues, I'll pray for you. you get, you're, you're speaking in tongues today. Say, Lord. Lord. Wow. Okay. I see that. Oh, yes. Say, Lord. Lord. I have the victory, have the victory. In, everything, in everything, though I don't know it yet. Teach me today how to walk in power, how to walk in victory, in Jesus' mighty name. All right, turn and give your neighbor a high five billion. And uh, turn to the other one, give him another one. And you can have your seats, you can have your seats, bless you.
Wow. That's a lot of sounds, people sitting down. It's like a train station. Praise the Lord. All right, can I come back? i come out here and look at you a little bit. The Lord is, uh, is really interested in helping people learn how to walk in victory. And you're looking at me like, what? You understand me? Yes. How many understand me? How many don't? Okay, nobody. All right, so listen up. Shake yourself again. Yeah, I'm like, hey, mama, I like you. She's laughing and saying, yeah, I'm doing it, man. <laughs> wow, you blessed me. Wow, wow, wow. The Lord wants us to walk in victory. Yes? Yeah. Yeah, thank you for the one yeah. Any amens? Amen. You people are very quiet. Amen. Can you say amen? Come on, come on, talk amen. to the... Thank you. Oh, that's getting better. Talk to the prophet now. Don't be shy. You can shout at me and I'll be happy. Like she went like this. Yeah, I was like, but you lit up the whole place. <laughs> action is the key to victory. Write that down. Number one, action, action, A-C-T-I-O-N. The first part of it is act, A-C-T, right? If you don't take action, God is not even responsible for you having any failure. You have to move. Jesus moved. He did everything for us, yes? Mm -hmm. The Father planned everything for us already, right? Yes. He has our destiny at heart and planned already from even generations ago. Mm -hmm. God told Jeremiah, before I formed you in your mother's womb, I, had, I called you to be a prophet to the nations. And he said, see now that I've set you over the kingdoms and see what I'm going to do. And he said, you'll tear down, pull, pull down, throw down, and then uproot the wrong things and then build and plant. So there's four things in Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 10. There's four things that have to be done before the two positive things. You have to uproot, you have to tear down, you have to throw down, you have to destroy some things, which means your environment. The Lord spoke to me, oh God, thank you, Lord, a long time ago. And he told me, son, I want you to tell my people this truth that I'm going to tell you. And I've done it on all six continents of the world with my blessed feet. Can someone help me get my, uh, okay. Kenya, you're flying away. Where are you going? <laughs> Kenya, stay here. Okay, don't, don't go. All right. The Lord said to me, he said, he said, son, your environment will either pollute you or promote you, depending on what it is. So if you want to be able to take good action, you have to first look around your life and say, what do I need to change? What do I need to fix? And if something is irritating you, then it's not the right thing for you. Amen. Yeah. How many have some... Come on, you people are going to be religious on me on Sunday or what? You're going to tell the truth? Let's be truthful. Take the mask off. Just take, reach up to your face and put, go like this. Take it off. We don't, care. we don't care. You can't fool the prophet. I can look in everyone's life. I'll tell you your whole story from beginning to end. Yeah, I can do it. I'm gifted like that. If I had time, I can do it. With every single person, I'll unfold you, unravel you, take everything I'll tell you everything what happened from when you're a baby to where you're going. I can do it right now. Amen. That gift lives in me 24 hours a day. The Lord Jesus Christ appeared to me and laid his hands on me in an open vision when I had just gotten saved. Yeah? And so no man called me. Jesus came from heaven and appeared to me like, like he appeared to a Saul of Tarsus on Damascus Road and turned him into Paul the Apostle. I had that experience. Since that day, when I had just gotten saved, and I didn't know anything about prophet, church, nothing, because our family was not, were not Christians at all. I was the first one that we know about in our, in my, in our bloodlines. On either side, my father's on my mother's side. Back generations, nobody that we know was ever born again. Is that amazing? And the Lord came for me. Why? 
My father was the political boss of New York for 30 years. Now he's in heaven. Why? Because I led him to the Lord. Someone lift your hands. His own son led him to Jesus. He gave birth to something good that we didn't know about. So since that day, and, and anyway, I was going to follow, I was supposed to follow in my father's footsteps, yes? Yeah. All of my father's protégés are multimillionaires, every single one of them. They have their partners in the law firm, with his law firm. They're, they have political favor in New York, in the state of New York, in, 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 the, in the United States. They're very rich men, all of them. But I'm richer. Amen. I said I'm richer. In, a, in every way, mm -hmm. especially spiritually. Because yeah. if they don't know God, what is all the money going to do for them? Uh, Praise the Lord. Amen. We can have money, but do we have, do we have God? Amen. Do we have Jesus? Hello. Hello. Why, well, I feel the anointing just falling right now. There it is right now. There it is right now. Lift your hands. The Lord just walked in here. The angels are here right now. Kaba. Shalakahate. Sokote. Right now, right now, the fire just came right here. It's just, just right now. It just blew in like a wind. Yes, Lord. Wow. The visitation of the Lord is the most powerful thing a man can ever have. It's the most Powerful thing a woman could ever have. It's the greatest, the greatest riches anywhere come from heaven to earth. And Jesus has already been the sacrifice. Keep your hands up. Keep worshiping God. The anointing is falling on people. I'm telling you from today, mama, from today, this church will not be the same. From today. This is a visitation from heaven right here. The people are going to get blessed. Some of you are going to get breakthroughs you never saw in your life. When God comes on the scene, that's what begins to happen. Business people, rise up. Preachers, rise up. Evangelists, rise up. Prophets and pastors and teachers, rise up. And I ain't calling nobody an apostle. I'm not saying apostle. Because if you're an apostle, truly, we'll, we would know about it. Because no, an apostle doesn't get made like day one, now you're an apostle. No, 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 that's wrong. People like titles so much. Why don't you just be a servant? I love the meme that says this apostle, pastor, bishop, chief bishop, archbishop, prophet, <laughs> doctor, <laughs> reverend, and they were all X'd out in the meme, and the bottom said servant. Mm -hmm. I said, that's me. That's me down there. That's me. That's me there at the bottom of the list right there. That's me. I don't need a title. I do what I do, and God walks with me. Yes. It's evident. You can ask about me. People say, this man carries the, the glory of God. What better, better privilege is there than that? And I take it back to when Jesus Christ appeared to me and laid his hands on my head and said, my son, I'm calling you to be my prophet to the nations. I'm ordaining you and commissioning you to be my prophet to the nations in an open vision. From that day, I had this gift. And then on another Friday, that was on a Friday in New York City in my house, Another Friday, the Lord gave me the discerning of spirits, a special grace for that by the Holy Spirit. I've had it from that day. I can see a demon from far away. I can tell, t take somebody through in their life prophetically. It's like that gift is in me all the time. And it can be very disturbing because you see too much. <laughs> it's a price tag to walk and carry that. It's not a joke. Another thing is when you get wisdom. When you get wisdom, you might, Dr. Lucy, bless you, dear. It's good to see you here. And my friend here and everybody, God bless you. I salute all you preachers and servants of God. Wow. Happy Father's Day. Woo. Glory. When, uh, <laughs> when your mind gets filled with wisdom, <laughs> you, can, you can get very disturbed. <laughs> it's costly because now you see everything that's you, smart and stupid. You see both. And it's very troubling. Lift your hands and say, give me wisdom anyway. I'll take it. <laughs> it's better to have it than not have it. <laughs> Proverbs 4 says, wisdom is the principal thing. Now, Lord, what do you want to do since you walked in here? Lift your hands. There's people being healed right now. Touch, touch with fire. There's demons that have been following you. 
that from today you'll not find them again. Amen. There's devils that have troubled you. There's issues and situations and curses that have tried to follow you. I break them all in Jesus' name right now. From today, things will become new. Amen. It's like the dark cloud was there, and now the heavens and the light begins to shine, and you say, God, what happened to me? Why was, how did I lose time? How did I lose? Because you were oppressed by other things. So the Lord said, your environment either pollutes you or promotes you, depending on what it is. You need to have a good environment. Let me give you a principle. You can write this down if you want. The atmosphere you create determines the product you produce. Or the life, the productive life that you want is determined by your atmosphere. Your environment, which means your friends. Do you know your friends could be a prophecy of your future? Because they're going one way, if you don't want to go where they're going, then get away from them. Hello? It's very difficult sometimes to... Um, have a great environment, but we need to work on that. Write this down. I need to have a great environment. I need to have the best people around me. I need to have the best people around me. And that cameraman, he disappeared. I guess he, you thought I meant leave. I didn't mean leave. Oh, he's in the back? Where's that guy? Keep taking pictures, bro, if you're around. Somebody tell him. But stay over there somewhere. Go up top, take some pictures, go around. Someone say, I am a genius. I am a genius. Someone say, I'm born of God. I'm born of God. So I can't be foolish. So I can't be foolish. The anointing of God is in my life. So I can't lose. So I can't lose. Lift your hands and say yes to that. Yes. Mom, when I came in and I, I looked at you, I said, who's that? I said, you, check, you, put, you did your hair so beautifully. God bless you. you. This happens all the time, you know. I see somebody, I know them, and then I look at them next time, I'm like, who's that? They're like, oh, you did your hair. That's the thing for African ladies. See me? <laughs> it happens all the time. I'm like, I know you. I know you. I remember. But what happened? Well, okay. Oh, I see. It's this. See, mine is automatically, permanently there. It's a gift from the boss. Someone say, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Some people say, I want your hair. I'll profit. Oh, my God. I say, no, you can't have it. This is for me. Praise the Lord. It's right here. You can't have it. Sorry. Let's pray. I'll pray for you. You'll get, you get some. I, I, I landed in Nigeria at the airport, and this guy said, whoa, your hair is beautiful. Oh, my God. I said, yeah, thank you. But you can't, you can't have any. Someone say, my environment, my, environment. my, friends. my friends, my associations, my associations. Is, everything is everything for my business life, for my, business for my, life. Productive, purpose. For my productive purpose. In Jesus' name. Say, Lord, give me the best of the best. Lord, give me the best of the best. I prophesy, I prophesy. Mom, I prophesy. All of you, I prophesy from, from today. By the Holy Ghost, because the visitation of God is here. I, I, I say this to you. From today, the wrong people will leave you and run away from you. And the right people are coming by the floods, by many. And you'll be surrounded with so many good people. Let me prophesy. You'll be surrounded with so many good people. You say, how do I utilize all this? I was sitting outside, and I had a very bad moment for a moment. I had a very bad, painful moment in the spirit. I was praying just a few minutes ago, and I thought about some people. I thought about some situations, and I thought, ah, God, this is tough what you're showing me, but I know I'm going to make the adjustment. Mm -hmm. Lift your hands. You, you know you have to just make adjustments. Mm -hmm. And when you see somebody good, you need to, like, hug them and embrace them and say, you're my friend now. Let's work together. Amen. And do it today and tomorrow, and don't wait. Mm -hmm. You know the African thing, like, let's see about next week. Let's see about the... Week but one. You know, you say but one. I, I still, I'm, as an American, I still don't know what that means. <laughs> Last Sunday but one. What does it mean? That means two Sundays ago? Okay, give me the calendar, four Sundays in the month. Show me which one. Next week but one. 
Huh? Or Fortnite comes from the British language. What does it mean? I don't understand all that. I just know about today. Today. Now. Amen. Amen. Hebrews 11 one says, now yes. faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And I like to say yet, because the word yet is, I'm not adding to the scripture, but it, it explains the verse before it a little bit. So that's the Thomas Manton the fourth version there. Okay? If I could say that. The evidence of things not seen yet, meaning you're going to see it because mm -hmm. we're exercising our faith, but we just haven't seen it yet. Yeah. So in the spirit, there's no future. It's always now. Everything is now. Mm -hmm. Let me prove it to you now in the earth realm. You say today is today, right? Yes. Today is today, yes? yes. Today, is today. today is today. And then the future is the future, right? Mm -hmm. Guess what? Tomorrow morning comes, and you rename tomorrow today. Yes. So there's no tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Then you say tomorrow, then tomorrow morning, my sister, right? Tomorrow morning you wake up, you say, oh, it's today. You can't say it's tomorrow. People say you're crazy. What do you mean tomorrow? It's today. Yes. Well, what day is it? What day is it? Toon I like how members talk. Tuesday. Thursday. You know how people from Meru, you know how they say that? What day is it? Tuesday. They don't say Tuesday. They can't say it. What day? What day? What day? So your future, y'all didn't get that one. Okay, I know you, it's a Kikuyu land here. Lift your hands. Praise the Lord. No Meru's in the house. You didn't get it. You didn't get it. All right. Moving right along. You, you, you have to understand that time is ticking away and we have to make some serious decisions and take great action. Yes? yes. Are you, will you do it? Will you make that decision? Guess what? If you don't make the decision, God can't do it for you. He already did all he was going to do. Jesus paid the price and said, it is finished. Amen. That means everything you need and want is already here for you. Amen. It's here right now. Amen. It's just that you didn't see it yet. You're in the wrong company. You don't have the revelation. The Holy Spirit hasn't dealt with you strongly enough. Let me tell you, when the Holy Spirit comes to you and shows you hard things that even could seem painful, take it. Take it. Take it strongly. Take it. I mean, take it like a man. Take it like a real woman. And say, God, I'm sorry. Help me now. Because there's always hope for tomorrow. But remember again, when you get tomorrow, you're going to rename it today. So yesterday is in the tomb. Tomorrow is in the womb. I only have today. Amen. Yes? yes? Someone say the word now. now. If you want something, you say, they say, when do you want it? I say, I want it now. Mm -hmm. I have a sentence, a state, an answer for people when they ask me, prophet, doctor, when do you want this? I said, well, yesterday, today, or tomorrow, whichever comes first. Dr. Lucy, you get that? Yesterday, today, or tomorrow, whichever comes first. Okay, now, yesterday was first, but yesterday's past. Today is here. If I don't see it today, then I want it tomorrow at the latest. Lift your hands. If you start to do that, everything gets accelerated. Have you ever looked back and see how much time you've lost in things? You've lost time. You've lost opportunities. Why? Because you didn't strike. You didn't make the decision. Am I helping you yet? Yes. You didn't strike. You waited. You said, next week but one. Cancel that. Lift your hands. Praise the Lord. Amen. Cancel that from today. Amen. Say, but nothing. It's now. Let's, okay, we can't do it today. How about tomorrow? Like, I was supposed to have a meeting, right, with a dear friend. I won't say who, but I'm looking in the direction, right? And people were having me day to day to day, meeting after meeting after meeting. I'm like, ah. Okay, and we kept, we kept saying we reschedule. But anyway, it's going to be scheduled this time. We won't miss. Like the middle of the week, okay? Monday, Tuesday, I'm cooked, but Wednesday on, with Wednesday, Wednesday on, we can. I, I don't like to procrastinate. Procra write this down. Procrastination is a thief. I'll help you. It's a big word. P-R-O. 
Crash, C-R-A-S-T-I-N-A-T-I-O-N. Wow, it's a long word. But at the end of the word is nation. Procrastination. Wow. Are you seeing that? Procrast. Pro. Crast. You, 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 you're delaying and denying yourself of something you're supposed to have. Am I speaking to you like a father? Like a coach? Like a leader? Like a mentor? Like a trainer? Is that all right? Why would I do something else? You've heard all the gospel sermons, right? Mm -hmm. You've heard everybody preach every kind of thing. You've heard it all, right? Yes. But now you need some, somebody to help you to execute and activate things to a higher level. <sighs> Lift your hands. Somebody, I see you have a very serious problem. Your hip down your leg has, has been very painful. The Lord's healing you right now. You'll walk straight from today. Somebody else has a growth in the abdomen, in the female a lady, in the female organs, something inside the reproductive area. I curse that growth. It will dissolve and leave from today. Someone else, you've had a very bad uh, 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 pressure in your upper chest. You feel this, this uh, pressure. You're breathing. It's open from now in Jesus' name. Eyesight, be healed. Everything in the, any kind of affliction. Blood sugar, blood pressure, organs of the body. Be fixed right now by the Holy Ghost in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, I, I want to tell you, anybody else has any kind, any kind of ailment, any pain in your body? Lift your hands right now. I want to cover it all right now. I don't want to say four things and then that's it. Because somebody else has something, some other problem that I didn't mention. Lift your hands right now. Say, Lord, heal me right now. I'm healed right now. I'm delivered right now. I'm delivered right now. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. You check yourself. You find out that thing is gone. Lay your hands on yourself as a point of contact. I do it myself, right? All of us are in a physical body, right? Father, I thank you for your healing fire. New eyes, new heart, new lungs. Fixing of all the organs in the body. The skin, the tissues, the nerves, the muscles, the bones. Everything in us fixed. Yes. Jesus. That even when we're 90 years old, we'll feel like we're 45. Thank you, Lord. We'll have the testimony like Moses. He was old, but he was strong. Mm -hmm. And Caleb and Joshua, they had another spirit. They, they were strong like young men. I'm like that. If I told you my natural number of years, you'd be like, no. Prophet, you're kidding. I will not tell you. She said, tell us. No. <laughs> Private file. Sorry. I've had the biggest and the best ask me, and I don't answer anybody, because the number, whoo, it's a big number. Uh-huh. But, but I don't look it, right? I, do I look like a young man? I'll be like that forever. Lift your hands. And when we get to heaven, we'll have young bodies. Beautiful. I don't think anybody in heaven will be too fat or too skinny. I think everybody will be just perfect. Yes. With tight skin, skin tone, bright eyes, beautiful complexion, walking strong, you know. Yes. But Jesus said, as it is in heaven, so let it be on earth. We need to pull it down for ourselves right now. Lift your hand up and say, Lord, as it is in heaven. So be it for me on earth right now. In Jesus' name. Pull it down. Come on, come on. Pull it down and pitch yourself. And hit the person next to you and say, hey. Get energized, man. I heard this guy who's a motivational speaker. He's a billionaire in American dollars. He's a very rich, very successful guy. And I'm not going to name his name because I don't want to go into that world, because he's not in the church, he's in the secular world, but he's a very brilliant guy, very successful guy. He built himself from nothing. Let me tell you, everybody that comes up into something great, they, they, they built it from nothing. They built themselves up out of nothing.
Can I prophesy to you? You can do it from today. Amen. I mean, tomorrow is not like today. Yes. Where did that photographer go? Did he quit? Where did he go? Somebody find him. I'm just wondering. I feel like he's missing. Lift your hands. This is what he said. You want to know what he said? He said, even when I was a young man and I was working with all these brilliant people, I asked myself, and maybe he said, if, if he asked God, maybe he said God. I don't know. I hope he, I hope he asked God. I hope he, he, I hope he said God. I hope he said that. But I, I tried to figure out what do I need the most. You want to know what it is? Mm -hmm. Energy. Yeah. Lay your hands on yourself and say, I'm full of energy by the life of God. If you want to fulfill the purpose of God, you need energy, strength, you need health, and you need a lot of money. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Lift your hands and say, I claim the money in Jesus' name. Pull it down and take it. Hit yourself. Who has a bag? Open your bag. Ladies, you got a bag? Pick your bag up and open it up like you got room. Hey, 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 hey. Hey. Let's pray. I'm prophesying. Yes. Hold it up. Yes. Say, Lord, fill this with money. Lord, In, Jesus name. In Jesus' name. Now, where's your wallet for your accounts or whatever? I have this funny colored thing I got in Africa. Look at that. It's like a leopard. Anyway, hold your wallet up. Or hold your, uh, you have some money or you have something you hold money in. Hold it up. And, and let's say also representing your accounts. Say, Lord, fill my accounts with money. From everybody all over the world. Hey, that's great. Let's do business at the altar. That's right. Is this the altar? Hey, hey, I'm smart. <laughs> Fill it up right here. I believe in altars, what we call the altars, right? Can I tell you, you are an altar. Your life is an altar. You're a vessel. Oh, you're still holding it, dear? I like you. I feel your face. Stand up. Kasha la bahata. Father from today, she'll be blessed with new money, will come, favor from new things that she's never seen before. Amen. In Jesus' name, wow. Amen. I pray that over every person. Lift your hands right now. Mama, yes, I, got, I like, oh, you have a nice bag too. Woo, that's a nice bag. <laughs> Fill it up in Jesus' name. Wow. <laughs> Man, I felt the anointing on that. Dr. Lucy, lift your hands. I keep calling you doctor. Why? Hold your bag up. Stand up. Father, for the business enterprise that she has, let the fire of God come and fire, let the fire bless her and let her fire everybody that's wrong. And as they come and they don't act right, let them just, let it be strong to put them off and put them out and bring her the best people. And loads of resources to build. I see your name. I see the name. I don't know the name of the company. I don't know the name of the I don't know anything about it. We just met recently. But I see the Lord putting light on the names and lifting them up. And they'll be known by people. And you'll be doing so much business, it'll scare you. That's the word of the Lord. That is the word of the Lord. Lift your hands up right now. How many people want to go into business? Or you have a business, or you've started a business, you've started companies, or you started a company, or you want to, lift your hands. Father, thank you for treasures that we've not seen. All right? I have so many scriptures I could read from memory. I don't even have to, old, I have my Bible everywhere with me. But Isaiah 45 is one. I'll give you treasures of all kinds of places. Amen. Deuteronomy 8.18, I'll give you power to get wealth. To make, manage, and multiply money and resources. That's what it means. My covenant is with you to bring you treasures. I was reading yesterday. Yesterday I did a very interesting meeting in the Sarit Expo Center for some great business people, very vi vi vibrant people, powerful. It's a very different kind of event. And we'll, we'll release the video. It was brilliant. And one thing the Lord had me open in the morning, and I want to speak this over you, is Deuteronomy 33 was... The last prayer, uh, an apostolic prophetic prayer over the people from Moses. And a lot of it, he was talking about strength. He said, Gad, 
Be filled with strength and be enlarged. Because you're, you're like a lion amongst all kinds of people. Amen. You're vicious and fierce. Yes. Gad is one of the, the tribe's men. Mm-hmm. And, then, and he, went, he began to speak over each one, the blessing. We need the blessing of the Father. I was sitting outside and the Lord spoke to me again. I almost began to weep. Because I remember I did a whole series on this called The Blessing of the Father. Lift your hand and say, I received the blessing of the Father. The Father God. And if I be any kind of spiritual father, I can also release it to you. From his own hand, through my hands. From his own voice and mine, through my own voice and mine. And my spirit. His spirit through my spirit. The presence of God is falling right now. Bless, I bless you. I bless you in Jesus' name. People of Kenya. People of Kenya, I prophesy. This is being recorded. I trust it'll just be okay to get out to everybody. We're going to release this message. This is for everybody. Whether you're here with us today, many people are here. But many people are out there, millions more. I bless every one of you. As long as you're not a thief and a criminal and a liar and a crook. Because then you have to repent first before you can get blessed. Yeah? Bless me, bless me. You know, like the the wickedest person is like, bless me, bless me. No, there's no blessing. You've stolen. You have to pay back. You have to repent. You have to get yourself right. Then you can be blessed. Before then, no. So I, I, I give that disclaimer. So it's not for everybody, but it's for a lot of good people that are hurting. I feel from the Spirit of the Lord, the Lord is weeping over people, looking at their lives and saying, I want them to go so far. Amen. But yet they're still so near. They haven't moved. I release the blessing over you. Oh, shakala basata, I release the blessing of God over you. As if the Lord was come like, he, like Jesus laid his hands on my head and called me as his prophet just many, many years ago. I won't tell you how many years ago. I think, it's 30, I think it's 36 years ago now. I think that happened 36 years ago. It was 1986, the month of September, in New York City. So it wasn't last week. I've been doing this a long time. Lift your hand. Like the Lord himself will come and lay his hands on you. I was in an airplane flying, and, the, and Jesus appeared in the aisle. And the presence of God filled the place, and everybody moved their seats in an aircraft. They moved. I turned around. All the seats this way were empty. Where did the people go? How? On an airplane, you have a seat. You're not supposed to move. But it was a sovereign act of God. I saw it happen in New York. I was sitting and I fell into a trance and the presence of God came in a crowded uh, subway car in New York City. And then when I lifted up my eyes, there was nobody. My whole half of the train was empty. People moved because the glory came. That's the kind of visitations that will change your life and change the world through you. Lift your hands. I want to release it today. We don't have all day and we'll we'll come back again and do something more. Yes, yes. We love to do that. But... uh, Today, the main thing here is that God is touching you. And I want to prophesy over the people of East Africa, the African continent, all the people of Kenya. 58 million people now. Uh, Many of them. Not all of them, but many of them. Are going to be blessed in new ways because God has sent me as his prophet to this nation. God has sent me here. You know, a lot of people could say that, but I don't know if the witness is, uh, is on it. But I tell you, it's evident the Lord has sent me. And uh, his yoke is easy and his burden is light. I keep reminding myself of that. The pre- Can you feel the presence of God right now? Can you feel? Fire of God upon you. Fire. Fire, 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 fire. Yes. From today, things will open up for you in a new way. From today. Things will not be like they were before. From today, the blessing of the Lord's coming upon your head and your house. Hi, baby. Even the babies. Yes. We're going to grow up in different houses because God's going to rearrange you so much, you'll change your address. I prophesy the things you want to have in the realm of how you're living, God's going to upgrade it. But you, gotta, you have to get this first, you know? You have to get him first. You have to get his power in you first. You have to know what his call and his will is first. 
and do it with all your heart, then he'll begin to bless you. I see many people, you'll be moving. When I see you again sometime in the future, you'll say, Prophet, you spoke Father's Day Sunday at the church, and now I'm not where I was. My business is flying. My business is flourishing. Is that good? Is that good? I know Mama's happy about that. She's a successful businesswoman. Of course she wants other people to be successful in business. Can I tell you, when you have the heart of a true leader, you want to see people blessed like you are. The Bible says in Psalm 35, 27, I take pleasure in... Oh, there he is. Hey, you're back, bro. High five. (laughs) I thought you... I was looking for you. He he reappeared. Ah! Okay. Psalm 35, 27 says, "The The blessing of prosperity should be upon my servants... And when it is, I, I'm happy about that. Lift your hand and say, God gets happy when I'm blessed. God gets happy when I'm blessed. Now, somebody might have thought that was just talking about David, the lead man. No, it's everybody who's a servant. Are you a servant? Yes. I told you about the meme. I like the picture. It's a little bit, uh, it's a little bit cutting. It's a little bit convicting to the, to the proud preacher who just looks for honor everywhere. I need the special seat. Yesterday, I was a main speaker in this event. We had a panel discussion. You'll see the video. I walked in, and I went to the back, and I sat in the back. And they looked like, oh, there's a seat up here. I said, no, I'm here. I'm a good here. Leave me alone. I said, when it's my time to speak, you call me, and I'll come up. No, I'm going to sit right here. I'm comfortable back here. I have some empty seat next to me. I have some room. I'm happy. I don't to sit in the front row. I need a special seat. Right? Apostle, bishop, doctor, reverend, apostle, prophet, chief, presbyter. (laughs) How many names we got? (laughs) The holy and righteous, right? (laughs) Lord of lords, chief archbishop. (laughs) Cross all them out. Yeah, you can can give me some. Give me some more names. Give me some more. (laughs) And just at the bottom, written so nicely, servant. Mm -hmm. Woo! That's what I am. How about you? Lift your hand and say, I'm his servant. I'm his servant. His servant. His servant. Oh, yes. Now, Jesus said, I love this, in John 15, he said, I no longer call you servants, but I call you my friends. Let the Lord do that for you. Amen. But you don't appear and say, you know, I'm important. Jesus would, you know, if Jesus was, I feel the presence of God. I feel so reverent here. I got I to gotta lean on this a minute. I feel such reverence in me for the, for the presence of God. Can you feel right now? Lift your hands. The, the visitation of God is here today, in this meeting right now. <sighs> if Jesus himself was standing here right now and I would go to him and say, you know, you know how important I am? He'd look at me and go, hmm, really? Really? Are you sure? So let's always humble ourselves because Humility attracts heaven. Huh? A, humble, a humble positioning of yourself attracts the Lord. Let me tell you, you want to attract heaven and his power and his glory like we're feeling here right now? Two things, holiness and humility. Oh, yes. A humble attitude and a holy life. Put your hands out like this and say, Lord, please forgive me of every sin I've ever done. Please, let's pray. Let's pray. I don't have to have an altar call. I'll do it right now. There are two kinds of sin. There's sins you did something wrong, and there's a sin of you were supposed to do something, but you didn't do it yet. I call it, Mom, I call it the sins of omission and commission. Omission means I omitted it. I didn't do it yet. Commission means I committed it. I did something wrong. I don't know about you, but I hate any mistake in my life. I hate any wrong decision, any wrong turn. Anything I was supposed to do that I didn't do yet. I hate it. I feel stirred up because God's visitation is upon me. You know, when when God is really on you heavy, you'll feel like that. The, The minute you feel like you're okay with anything you do is dangerous. It yes, I'm telling them, Mom. I I I thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm doing it. The minute you feel like, I'm just okay, nothing matters, oh, watch out. You're supposed to feel like, like, it's almost like you feel terror. 
You feel pain inside of you because of something that didn't happen yet. You feel embarrassed for yourself before heaven because of the mistake you made. Lift your hands. Everybody has some problem. I'll tell the whole church, I'll take every archbishop, bishop, anybody. And I respect the office of the archbishop. My, my archbishop, Harrison Nanga, one of the greatest men of God alive in our generation. But he's a made man. He suffered a lot. He worked a lot through hard times. God has raised him and blessed him. And he's anointed. And he's humble. And he's sweet. And he's gracious. And he's kind. And he cares about people. And he teaches hard truths about how to live the Christian life, to challenge people. He's a real man of God. I'll tell you that. He's my friend forever. But all this stuff about, you know, people that think they're okay in their position. No, everybody has some problem somewhere. Let's pray right now. Let me give you the scripture. 1 John 1 and 9 says, Lord, I confess my sin to you. And I ask you to forgive me of all sin and to cleanse me from all unrighteousness. And we're going to say it's happening right now. Many people walk in their life. Oh, when I get a bunch of pastors together, I'm really going to deal with them. Because some will be sitting there like, yeah, uh, what am I, a sinner? Nobody said that. I'm not a sinner. You think I'm a sinner? I'm a saint. I'm living in the holy presence of God, yet I challenge myself. A lot of people are walking around with all kinds of degradation and wrong things in the files of their life. The filing system that the angels see. Yeah. And they're walking around every day with unforgiven sin. Maybe someone you were supposed to forgive, you didn't forgive. Because the Bible says in Mark 11, 23, 24, talks about the power of commanding things to move and then what you'd receive, 11, 24. But in 11, 25, Mark 11, 25, it says, you need to forgive everybody. We're going to do that all in the same prayer. Father, lift your hands. Father... In Jesus' name, say it. In Jesus name. Please forgive me, Please forgive of, me. All of all sin. I confess it to you now. I Whatever I did that was wrong, wherever I missed the mark, wherever I missed what I was supposed to do, whatever I was supposed to do, that I didn't do yet, help me now, Lord. We'll move, on in, we'll move on in great power from today. In Jesus' name. Now lift your hands and just celebrate that. And say, thank you, Lord. Some of you are going to feel different. Now I've given you a key, okay? I've given you, I'm, I'm just here now, and we have other schedules, but I'll come again. I, I will come again. I want to come again. But the Lord is having me give this to you. Write it down. 1 John 1, 9. The little epistle of John, not the gospel of John. Five little epistles, they're called, of John the Apostle, who wrote the gospel of John. Further on, toward Revelation, you see it there. 1 John 1, verse 9. Memorize it and pray it every day. How many will do that? I know, I know I'm very strong and forceful. My, I'm from New York. You know, I can't apologize. I'm an aggressive wild man, okay? Yeah. You invited a wild man today, Mom. You, you did. I am, I'm wild, like a lion in the Serengeti. I'm, so I'm not trying to say, hey, 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 but you know, but because I don't have the mic, the speakers, I'm shouting. So you can hear me, but it's okay. How many will do that from today? How many? I'll give you the option. Just lift your hand. How many will do that? Did you get it? Yes. Did you get it? Yes. Some people look at me like this. Okay. Let me look at the next person who's smiling. Dear, are you, are you still okay? Hey, mom, you still okay? Give me another one of those. <laughs> First John 1 John 1.9. I'm sticking on it for a minute because it's important. Write it down. Type it in your phone. 
Open it up in your Bible software. And pray it every day. And anytime you ever feel like you say something wrong or do something wrong, catch yourself and say, oh, Lord, I'm sorry, and I'm going to pray. You don't like that? You don't like that. Look at Mom, they don't like that. Lift your hands and convince me you're happy. Same Holy Ghost that was healing people a minute ago is still here. He didn't change. He's the same one. Yeah? Lift your hands. I say, I'm blessing you. Everybody's like, yeah. And then I tell you, hey, repent. And you're like, oh, you don't like that. How are you going to be blessed? Okay, I want to say something. God is the blesser. <laughs> if you don't get it from him, <laughs> where are you going to get it from? <laughs> if, he, if he doesn't choose to bless you, and approve of your life, where can you find the blessing? Please tell me. Nowhere. Is the devil going to give it to you? No. The devil will punch you in the head and say, get back down, I'll kill you. The devil laughs at people, you know, because they don't understand certain things. The Bible says in Hosea 4, 6, and in other places, it talks about knowledge. Through knowledge, the just will be delivered. Another place says through lack of knowledge, people are destroyed. And also by wrong environments, wrong situations you have around your life. All that needs to change. But when we, when we begin to clean this life, hello? You still love me? Yes. It's like you've gone somewhere. Lift your hands. Come on. When you clean this vessel, and now you stand before heaven and say, here I am, Lord. Everything I have, everything I am is yours. Everything is yours. Everything, everything, everything. Not even just some things or most, but everything is yours. Now God says back, now I got you right where I want you. Now I'm ready to move. Some things were hindering your progress because there was something wrong happening in your world, in your life. Maybe in the people around you. Maybe in you yourself. But the Lord wants to change all that. The Lord wants to change all that. Stand on your feet, everybody. I, pron I pronounce upon the nation today the blessing of the Father. Upon this nation. The blessing of the Father. Blessing of the Lord. Amen. Even me as prophet, I speak it prophetically. The blessing of the Lord that makes us rich and adds no sorrow. Amen. The blessing of the Lord that heals our physical body of every ailment. Amen. And the other thing in the prayer that I didn't get, I just want to finish it. Amen. We forgive everybody who's wronged us. Say that right now. Lift your hands. Say, Lord, I forgive everybody. Lord, I forgive now, they may not deserve forgiveness in your eyes. Yes. They could be the wickedest criminal. They deserve to be, you know, other things that we can't talk about in church. That sometimes we feel, we think about. They deserve all that, but you have to forgive them. Forgiveness is not to absolve the guilty of their guilt. It's to free you from them. Forgiveness is a gift that Jesus gave to us. And he said, if you don't forgive, neither can your father. He made it that strong for forgive you. Because he wants to challenge us to do it. Lift your, lift your hands up to the Lord. Say, Lord, Lord I, forgive everybody. I forgive everybody. That's wronged me. That's wrong. And I forgive myself, I forgive myself. For, not for not doing everything I could have done in life. Now, Father, give me another chance. Father, I'm praying this for everybody. This is prophetic. Yes. This is the word of the Lord. This is the Lord speaking directly to people. God's going to give you another chance. The scripture says in Job somewhere, there's hope for a tree. If it's cut, that it can sprout, sprout up again. Yes. There's hope. Amen. And there's another scripture that one of the minor prophets said that, though I don't see this and I don't see that, and this seems to be bad in the land. There's famine in the land. Everything is bad. But yet I still trust yes. that the next day is going to be better. And Haggai too, yes. Haggai says, the latter house will be greater than the former house. Yes. 
And Haggai also says, and the prophet Haggai so greatly said, that the silver and the gold is the Lord's. And the silver and gold, God said in many places, belongs to us. Abram became God's friend. He became Abraham, and God blessed him with treasures. God wants to bless people with treasures. Oh, yes. He really does. The treasures you want, they're there. They're out there. Now, God just has to get you ready for it. He has to get you ready for it. Lift your hands to the Lord. Some of you are going to feel very good after this. You're going to feel very clean. Say, Lord, I just something happened. It's like a transaction is happening at the altar here. So the house of God, the whole floor, every chair is the altar. We're in the, we're in the altar. We're in the place. We're here. Thank God for the servant of God here that put this place up for the people to come here. It's wonderful. This is an altar. But I have to tell you something a step further. You are an altar. Your life is an altar unto God. When you walk in power and authority, no devil can stand in your way. Amen. It doesn't matter what he tries to do. He can't win. Amen. You take the step, he has to move. Amen. You can have a whole bunch of thugs, you know, people, are evil creatures, whatever, standing in your way. And when you take the step, they got to go, whoop. I better get out of his way unless the fire will hit me. Can I tell you a quick story? Just look, keep praying. Keep praying with me right now. I saw a lion, a young male lion that was wounded. And he sat down because he was cut on the legs, you know. I think the, something, he was in a fight. And he was sitting there and he had a very bad look on his face. All of a sudden, like 20 or 30 hyenas came around him. And you know how the hyenas are? <laughs> you know how they do that? They call them the laughing hyenas. They really laugh. Have you ever seen them? How, how did God make these amazing... Lord, creation. So the hyenas are laughing. <laughs> and they're going around and they're trying to go and bite the lion. Now watch this now. I'm going to tell you something. It's powerful. That young male lion, all he had to do was turn his head and look at the hyenas, and they all went. Amen. Amen. And, amen. and he couldn't get up and walk because his legs were damaged. So then he had to wait, either get eaten by the hyenas, but he couldn't. They couldn't get him because he's Simba. Praise the Lord. Amen. And we're Simba, like from the lion of the tribe of Judah. Yes. yes. That's us. Yes. So all the hyenas out there, they have to move out of the way. Oh, yes. yes. Amen. Yes. Now, now, I like hyenas, how they laugh. They're kinda, it's kind of cute. I, like, I think it's amazing. <laughs> but it's kind of funny how they are. They have tall front legs. And a big jaw, they're very strong, you know. But their back legs are low. Why? <laughs> so when they walk, they walk like this. I was looking at them. I was out in the Sabo. And I was watching them walk past me. I was like, look at them. They walk like... <sighs> no match for the power of God. Yes. And I want to prophesy to everybody. That lion, all he had to do was look. Mm -hmm. Remember Daniel and the lion's den? They all went to sleep with him because of the presence of God that he carried. Mm -hmm. When you're carrying the presence of God, everything has to move for Amen. you. The, Bi the Bible even says that when your ways please the Lord, Hallelujah. even your enemies have to be at peace with Amen. you. Amen. Amen. Yes. Come on, clap your hands and give Jesus a praise. Woo! 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 And the, the Psalm 23 said, he'll set a table for us yes. to sit at in glory as a king yes. in the midst of all the enemies. Yes. But it says, when a man's ways please the Lord. You see now? You see now? And 2 Chronicles 26.5, thank you Holy Spirit for giving me the remembrance right now. You know, I have hundreds and hundreds of scriptures, maybe a thousand of verses from the Bible in my memory. I've memorized. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So when the Holy Spirit just has to hit the file, push the button, and it comes up. Boop. Push the button. Pew. 
So 2 Chronicles 26.5, I'm not looking at any, any notes, you can see that. And there's no teleprompters here like the President of America will have a look at reading the speech. Just from the Spirit. 2 Chronicles 26.5 says, As long as I sought the Lord, He made me to prosper. Amen. This is the thing that people are missing. They're going through life and then the prayer service becomes, the prayer service becomes a victim a victim session. Lord, I'm victimized. Lord, I'm hurting. Lord, I need this. Lord, help my children. Lord, school fees. Lord, we need rent money. We need. Come on, man. Mm -hmm. You're like a beggar, yet you're a king. Lift your hands. The Bible says we're kings and priests unto the Most High. Revelation 1 6. He calls us royalty, so we're kings and queens. I can't be that. I'm a king. So let me say for the ladies, I'm a real man, by the way. 100%, baby. I'm 100% of a man. I don't have any feminine qualities about me at all. And no apology. I'm a real man. You met me, you met a man. A real one. Praise the Lord. But a lady can be a queen. The man is a king. And the little babies, bless the babies, Lord, are little princes and princesses. Lift your hands and say, we're royalty. We are royalty. So why are, we, why are we acting like beggars? Father, say it. Father, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I repent. I repent. For acting like a beggar. For acting like a beggar. When I'm really a royal son. Really and you ladies say you're a royal daughter. 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 Son. And you know, Kikuyu, my name is Thomas. Thomas. You know, Lady Wairimo, the prophet. Do you know Evangelist Teresa? Yes. Teresia, excuse me, my friend. When we met, she said, Thomas, you know. I. That's the way, Thomas. I never forgot that. I, I'll tell you a testimony. I was with Reinhard Bonnke and Morris Cirillo in New Jersey, outside of, across from New York, at the Meadowlands Arena. There was a meeting, and because she was in a relationship with Reinhard Bonnke, Evangelist Teresia, uh, she was there preaching in that conference, and they arranged for me to meet with her, because she'd heard about me, and people brought us together. And she came out, we sat together in a hotel, just together at a table in the restaurant, me and her, there was nobody there. We ordered a drink, I think she ordered a Coke, you know, Coca-Cola, I had some coffee or something, I don't know what. We sat there, and the power of God fell. Amen. And she said, she said, you know, Thomas, I stay in my room, and I pray, and I don't talk to anyone. How did I come to be here sitting with you? I just looked at her and smiled. I said, well, evidently Jesus has arranged this appointment. Amen. And let me tell you what happened. The power of God fell, and I began to see visions right there at the table. And I began to prophesy. Yes. I began to prophesy. And I told her 12 things from the Lord, from heaven, that will happen. She wrote them all down. Like I see you writing notes in a book. Like she had a book like that. She wrote 12 things. Can I tell you, every single one of the 12 things happened. Let me tell you what was in the 12 things. The big crowds. I saw big crowds and miracles. It hadn't happened yet. This was 30 years ago, by the way, in 1994. That's 30 years ago now, this month. I think it, the conference, I think, was also in May or June. So it was exactly 30 years ago. Wow, how time goes. That's why I'm so stirred up about time. And, the, and uh, I saw offices in the city. I had never been to Africa. I saw a tall building. I said, you're going to have offices there. She, it happened. I see God giving you favor with the president of the country. It happened. I see children and orphans, people you're going to take care of. She, saw it, she did it. She built that thing all over the place, children's homes and all that. And I ultimately see a great church, a great building, which didn't happen for many years, but now she's built it in Karen. Yes. It's there now, yes. you see. And this was 30 years ago the Lord spoke all this. The power of the office of the prophet, I'll have to teach on it another day. I can't even tell you the power that we carry. Lift your hands. I bless you today. And this carries a lot of weight. You're going to see miracles. I command the wrong people, leave your life. 
and the right people come. In Jesus' name. From today. Yes. Now when you start to get stirred up and things don't go right in certain connections, let it happen because the angels could be doing it. Thank you, Lord. Never breathe life into something that God is killing. Oh, yes. yes. Did you get that? Yes. Never resurrect a dead thing. Amen. Leave it there. Amen. And move on. I believe, Father, for the best of the best. Amen. I believe for millionaires and billionaires to be raised up in the nation of Kenya. Amen. I believe that young people, young entrepreneurs are going to be blessed and enriched and empowered. Amen. Young people. Oh, yes. And people that are of age also. Everybody. But I see like this sur a, re a, sur a, a surge of a release of fire in the youth to, be go, to go into business. Amen. I'll let pastors talk to them about you know, their lifestyle and all that. I'll leave that to some other anointings. That's not my lane. I want to deal with their potential. Yes. I want to raise up artists. We want to see artists, mm -hmm. authors, business people, entrepreneurs. Amen. I can take somebody there and that. The rest I'll leave to the pastors. Amen. Lift your hands. God is going to touch this whole generation from top to bottom. Amen. Father, is the, I think his last stats was almost like 58 million people now in Kenya. A few years ago, it was just 50 million. So people are reproducing a lot all the time. Eight million more. Wow. Father, I speak the blessing of the Father over the whole entire nation. And over your servants who have been struggling. I know the struggle. I know how it is. I know a lot of situations. I know a lot about a lot of things. Father, you'll take the good ones and raise them up out of the ashes and give, build them. You want to be a king or a queen, you have to have a palace to rule from. And you can't move fast. I, this is in my book. By the way, uh, I have this great book that Archbishop Harrison Nanga wrote the foreword for. It's three pages he wrote about the anointing we carry and how God used our uh, ministry, myself too, through me to help the nation of Kenya in such great ways. He wrote it. He actually published the book too. And... Uh, this is available. I can sign copies if people want to get it. I just feel when I'm in the anointing, I need a front man. I need someone to come behind me and do the announcements. I can't be selling things in the pulpit. I, can't, I, just, I don't know what's wrong with me. So I'll, I'll say this. I think it's right. Before I leave, everybody should give some seed into this grace here. Okay, everybody. The church, do it themselves. The business people and everybody can give an offering. You can arrange that. And don't mix it with the tithes and the church offering. It's for the profit. Just do one thing for me, okay? Yes. Let's do that. I don't want to say numbers and amounts and start saying, you're going to do this and let me do I don't want to do all that. Not to say that God can't speak amounts, but he can, but you do the best you can. Lift your hands. Sow into this anointing. You know, you got to tap the grace somehow. Physically, you can do it by sowing into it. But um, in the book, the reason I said that, because in this book, two of the principles I wrote, one of them was in the topic of success. Let me read it to you here. It's on page 69. Woo! 65, 67, 69. Someone say, woo! Woo! Success. Here it is. I wrote this. You can't run fast into the future carrying the spiritual luggage of yesterday's seasons. You can't run fast with balls and chains around your ankles. You have to be broken loose from those shackles so you can run fast. And that's a principle on how to get to success. All that and more is in this book. <sighs> Lift your hands. Posha kala sahoranti shalita haisakaya. Madden, can you feel the presence of God? Can you feel? Can you see? Look at the people. Can you see? Can you see over the people? Can you see? How many thank God I didn't come by myself? He came with me. Father, your blessing that makes rich. Poverty is not destined for you. It was never your destiny. Prosperity is for you. Blessing is for you. Blessing is for you. Also, you can follow us online. Okay, my website is Thomas Manton, like my name, thomasmanton.com. 
C-O-M, Thomas Manton, M-A-N, Thomas, you know how to spell, Thomas. And Jesus, John chapter 20, and Jesus saith unto Thomas. Right? You know how to spell that one? And the last name, M-A-N-T-O-N, T. M-A-N, man, ton. Dot com. And you can follow us online. I have a free e-newsletter. If you fill in the box there with your details, you can get free messages from me. And you can see in future where we're going to be and events we're going to be doing and all that. Also, I have so many prophecies for Kenya. Oh, my God. You know? When I came in, I was so... But I've, I've written several other books... Even a whole book on the prophetic. <sighs> Supernatural operations through the office of the prophet. Very powerful. And this one is Prophecies for Kenya. One little book. We're going to reprint with this, but I have about five other books. Just prophetic words. Do you know, I have to tell you something that's scary. I told you 12 things that I prophesied to evangelist Teresa Y. Remo. And uh, probably about... 50 things that I prophesied to Archbishop Harrison Nanga for in his pulpit. By the way, he told me he wants to do two books for me. And I told him the second one, I decided to honor you and honor God and print every word that came out of my mouth while I was speaking in your, in your, in your meetings. Do you know when I first went there, they were running about 7,000. It's the biggest church in the city. Now they're breaking 12,000. Lift your hands. Since the power of God was released, even him, the great man, needed a prophet. You see, you see, you see, the power of the office of the prophet. Many things were spoken. And I, I think that God's given me probably about 1,000 prophecies for Kenya. Me. I don't know of any human alive that's heard God speak about a nation. And we want to put it all out to the people. How many will pray with us that everybody can get blessed? 58, 50 plus million people. Lift your hands. Father, thank you. Thank you, Lord. I hear the Lord saying wisdom, 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 knowledge and understanding according to Isaiah 11:2. I'm giving to my people. And Father, I pray for every leader in the land that they'll be blessed more. No matter how far they've gone, we pray that they'll have more land. I pray for your servants that they'll have land and build great buildings because this is going to be the day of the mega church in Kenya. It's going to be the day of the mega church. God's going to pick the ones that are really righteous, not the, not the corrupt people, the real ones and raise them now. And we're going to see like hundreds of thousands of people in the houses of God. Land and buildings are coming. Lift your hands. You need offices for your business. You need help. You need workers for your business. But first you need the spirit of wisdom. Then you need the spirit of knowledge. You need the spirit of understanding. You need to know how to move along in life. I speak that blessing over you. I'm not finished, but I'll pause here. Amen. And uh, I guess they'll receive an offering for us. Just do it as a single thing. Don't wait. As soon as I step off, let's just all receive the offering. You can come to the altar. Matter of fact, everybody prepare a seed right now. Prepare a seed right now where you're standing. Just reach in and grab a seed, whatever you'd like to give to the Lord. Everybody get something. You could bring it. You could bring it and sow it. Drop it on the altar. Don't put it in the bags. Just put it on the red carpet. Prepare a seed. Just begin. You can begin coming or you, you guys can uh, administrate that how you want to. Lift your hands up again. Now, you sat down on the money. Stand back up. You talk about offering, everybody goes, ooh, and they sit down. Why? I rebuke that spirit. You're supposed to go higher. Jump up, go, hey, it's time to give. Woo! Stand up. Stand up. The angels are watching you. Say, you look at this one, sitting down. I, I'm, uh, Lord... What about this one? Like a demon of poverty just pushes people back down. Why? It's not right. Lift your hands up high. Say, Lord, I'm blessed to be a blessing. 
And I want to just challenge you as I'm stepping off here. You need to become a giver. You need to become a giver. In your daily life, always give to people. Always help them. Live to be a blessing. And guess what? God will come and bless you. What's the promise from the Bible? Can I give it to you? Can I give it to you? Yes. Proverbs 11.25 says the generous person will become like a well-watered garden. Mm -hmm. Would you like your life to be like the Garden of Eden? Oh, yes. Lift your hands up. Then you need to be doing that. You, you're generous. Not looking to take, looking to give. All the time to give, to give, to give, to give. To give, to give, to give. Someone say, I'm a giver. I'm a giver. When you do good giving, you make a good living. Amen. Oh, yes. Proverbs 11.25. Make a note of that. Now, someone lift one hand up before the Lord and say, Lord, Lord. I'm going to walk in prosperity because I'm going to obey your word. I don't have time to teach that here, but I will in, in another session. About what is the biblical economic system. We need to know that. How did God say, this is the way I'm going to bless you. If you work with this, I'll bless you. Oh, I have a whole course on that we're going to have in our, on, in our school. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. All right. Can I get out of here? Can I go? Can you release me? Blow me a kiss and I'll know I'm going. Come on, give me a good one. I need to feel the love. It's Father's Day. Come on, give me one. I bless, thank you. I bless you too. Let's give Jesus one. Rose of Sharon, Lily of the Valley, Ferris of 10,000, <laughs> Bright and Morning Star, King of Kings, Lord of Lords, Amen, Faithful and True. Hallelujah. The Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace, the Mighty God. The lily of the valley, the fairest of 10,000. The good shepherd, the great shepherd, the door of the sheep, the bishop and overseer of our souls, the resurrection and the life. That's him. Let's worship him right now. Just blow him one right now. Blow him a kiss. Say, Lord, I love you. I love you. I love you. Come on, give him a kiss. Blow him a kiss. Lord, I love you. I love you. I love you. And now say this. My last statement. Say, Lord. Lord, teach me your ways, teach me your ways. And, let me do everything your way. and let me do everything your way from today, from today. In, a in a new way, and my life will be blessed. Will be blessed. I'm Thomas Matthew the Fourth. God bless you. Come on, you can do better than that.